Hello everyone, my name is Clara Kitzel and this is just a session of the academic trainees of what we wish we knew when we started the th uh, third year. So I'm just going to introduce myself and then the other academic trainees. My name is Clara Kitzel and I will be your tax clerk on the VOL campus. And then we have Yulandi. Hello everyone, I'm Yulandi van den Berg and I'll be your tax academic trainee on the Pochestrium campus. Um, Hello guys, I'm Tsukho Fatomalwani, but you can call me Tsukho. I'm your tech trainee um, from the Port Campus. Hello everyone, my name is Tirele Tsumasetlo. You can call me Tire for short. Um, I'm the academic trainee at the Mafutian Campus. Hello guys, I'm Okay, so this is a slide on what do you wish you had known before starting with your third year and why? Okay, so something I wish someone would have told me when starting with third year was how to flag and tag. So this is the book you will use in your third year and in TTA. I think the new book is actually blue. This is last year's book. But what I wish I knew was how to flag properly. If you, if you don't know, the flag is the thing we put at the side and then the tag is at the bottom. So you flag your section numbers, you flag very important principles that you know you'll use a lot. And then at the bottom, you basically, you tag your VAT Act, you tag your eighth schedule. But the thing is, you can't, um, our one lecturer, Ms. Sawinka Mostert, always says flagging means danger. You can't just flag, flag, flag and think everything will be fine. Step one, use these paper, uh, not paper flags, it's plastic because the paper flags doesn't work. It gets crumbled and yeah, it gets lost and it's just terrible. And when you write on it, it's it's just not like a flag. They okay? fold easily as well. Yeah, they yeah. fold easily. And then when you write on these flags, get yourself one of those fine liner, permanent marker, yeah. big, Cokey pens. You can't write on your flag with these blue pens or that big cookies that you used to color with as a child. You have to get something small so that you can read properly. And also be cautious of what you write on your flag. Write with purpose, then just write deductible. I mean, what does deductible mean? Write with purpose. Make sure that you know if you open there that you'll know exactly what's on that page. Okay. See you. Okay, and what I want to add on what I wish I knew was how to balance my third year because I would get that I would be relaxed, especially when I saw that the work has gotten a lot. I would just relax and be like, I'll cover that when I get there. And then when it's time to write exams or tests, then I'm stressing because there's so much work to do and there's so little time to do it. So I would, um, I, I wish I had known that they actually mean it when they say start now like do it right on the on the go um don't wait for last minute as well as plan it plan accordingly and use your time wisely but i think um yulandi and Tere is gonna touch a bit more on planning and everything so i just wanted um yeah i wish i knew that in my third year or when i was approaching third year, starting with third year so guys really listen to your lecturers and what they when they say start working and yeah that's from my side that's right. So moving on, what do you wish you had done during your third year studies to prepare for CTA? And we have a few pictures up here, which very much represents my experience. So first of all, I would say take care of your well being. There are at least two things that you need to consider your physical health as well as your mental health, okay? You have to watch what you eat. Uh, if you want to perform well, you should not eat chocolate because otherwise you're gonna get that sugar crash. And also get enough sleep uh, before a test, especially don't pull an all nighter. That, <laughs> it's so easy to fall into that trap, right? And then take care of your mental health. Put yourself with those who love you who are here to support you. And remember, if you are happy, it will affect you to get out of bed that day in order to tackle what is coming your way that day. And then secondly, regarding highlighting, 
So I have a little illustration here for you guys. Uh, this is to effectively use your legislation, right? You want to highlight with purpose. When you open up your legislation, there should not be yellow everywhere because otherwise in a test or exam, when you when you look for something, you will not know where to find it, right? So for example- Sorry, Yolandi. Yes. I just wanted to interject with, that used to be me. You should see my third year legislation and my uh, legislation from last year. Third year, yellow, orange, everywhere. Oh my goodness. So I think <laughs> this would really help the students a lot if you tell them what this um, means. And yeah. Definitely, definitely. I even keep purple in and purple is a bright color. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. you'll have to go ahead and tell them what this one, like yes. your, your yes. method. So for example, your VAT Act should not be everything yellow. Your CGT should not be pink everywhere, right? So what I did was I made a little note here on the side. Use pink for your headings or your section number references. So often in another section, they would refer back. So for example, CGT will refer, refer to other paragraphs. I use, I use uh, pink to highlight the section numbers. Then definitions, I use purple, blue for any dates, amounts, monetary amounts or percentages, right? And then orange is a crucial color for me because what I would do is, if I want to know what do I do, if I open up my act, what do I have to do? I just look for the orange. And then provisos or everything that's in the negative or exempt, that's in green. And yellow is just little small things that I know, but it's, I just find comfort in knowing that I did at least highlight that. And then I use another, like maybe a pastel color for anything that's new. This is a highlighting um, system that worked very well for me. Um, Yolanda, if I may add, because I know mm -hmm. in third year, well, you're still getting used to, or getting, um, it's still very new for you to be highlighting and stuff yes. like that. If you're still very unsure at the beginning, you can also, but it will take a bit of time. It's just that, but I think what used to work for other students was to first um, highlight in pencil and then go inquire from their trainees if they yeah. feel like, just to avoid, because I mean, if you have already highlighted, then it will be difficult to remove it. And I mean, you can't write or physically write on the on your legislation. So Absolutely. rather and go ask first and then be sure about it and then after it or rather wait for the topic and, and if you're comfortable with the topic and then as you look through the memos you can go back and then see that actually this was the more important um, word to take note of and so on. So that's a but that color coding it looks very very helpful you know thank you. Um, so, so my colleagues have given you guys quite a mouthful about what to do. Um, I just want to focus on study groups that you should have from your undergrad. I mean, if you take me for an example, I was a loner from first year to third year. I had to learn the hard way, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. I had to literally learn the hard way that having a group, a, a group, a small group, an intimate group that you can bounce off things from, you know, um, talk about what you guys need to study, talk about the content that you just studied for the day, and, you know, just make sure that you actually have grasped the concept, the concept that was taught that day. So study groups, make sure that it's strong as well. Don't, I'm not saying have four or five members, just three members in a group or four even, and uh, make sure that you structure it in a way that you know, okay, each and everybody's gonna pull out their socks and we can help each other as a group so that you know, if you've forgotten something, uh, another person can just come through and remind you that guys, don't forget we have a, a test to complete today in the test and quizzes tab, or we have a test that's upcoming and we have to do this and this and this, and just review those things prior to the test so that you can know where your knowledge lies. I think that's all from my side. Thank you. Okay, so now we have a slide here um, asking basically how different is third year tax from second year tax. Okay, so um, third year is definitely not second year, but it's also not CTA. So I feel like in third year, you can still, when you struggle with, a, let's say, a principle, there's still time to hammer a little on that principle 
go ask your lecture, go ask your academic journey, that by the time it's CTA, that principle is so burnt into your head, you don't struggle with it anymore because in CTA, there's no time to hammer on these little section numbers, for example, like section 11A. It's such a general section number. You can struggle with it, struggle with it in third year. Don't think I have CTA still to figure it out. There's no time to figure stuff out in CTA. Yeah, and also I wanted to add, <laughs> in second year, I would have gone and written an exam without doing one single question and I still passed. I would just study notes and theory. It doesn't work like that. In third year, do questions. It's really a lifeline. And I promise you, if you do like 15 questions, you'll probably get one of those in the exam. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, guys, just to come in on what Claudia has just said now, um, you know, have having done only the content and not the questions in second year and going on to pass it. We just need to remember that actually uh, second year text is just an introduction because that's the first time you'll be meeting this module. And when you're going into third year, we assume that you already have a base for, for, for knowledge. And now we're going deeper into the legislation. We're going deeper into the VET Act. Um, we're going deeper into the income tax, you know? So, so, so the most important thing that you need to do in third year, guys, it's knowing why you're doing something. Because in CTA, you would find yourself in a, in a situation whereby you are asked, why did you actually say this amount has to go into the cost income? So if we have questions within third year whereby you have a question that say only give reasons for your male effects, actually understand the reasons for, for, for the ones that you don't have to give effects for as well, for the reasons. Know your reasons, you know, go to your court cases as well, know how to apply them in the questions. And this goes on to what Claudia has just said, doing more questions, knowing how to apply a court case in each and every scenario that you can possibly get. Because the more practice that you get, the more comfortable you become with applying the content that you've learned. You know, know why you're applying section 1A of the cross income definition, you know, um, uh, and, and, and be, be comfortable with, with, the, with applying the sections that you have within the legislation. I don't know if you guys want to add anything to her, Yolandi. No, um, I think you guys covered it up and summed yes. it up well for the students. We can move on. Yes. Okay, so when we were third year, Kaiva didn't exist yet. So, but unfortunately, we experienced the crash and the burn in CTA. So we know what we're talking Very about much. with that. Um, I just want to say, don't think, thank you, Kevin. I'm getting up at 12 and then start to study at one. And then I'm just gonna do stuff like that for the rest of the year. Mentally, you're gonna burn out and academically also treat it like a normal day. Get up, dress up, sit in front of your laptop and work like it's a normal day. That's Don't right. take the online environment for granted. And it's easy to fall in that trap, hey? Because yeah, you <laughs> you'd be like, it's I so have easy. time, yeah. I have time. And you realize later, there's no time. No time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And just to come up on, on what you just said as well, Claudia, um, you know, uh, you need to make use of your time, guys. You literally have 24 hours in a day. And like uh, Yolandi said, you need that sleep so you can allocate yourself at least six hours of sleep. And you know, you're already sitting at 18 hours. And now you need to make sure that within those 18 hours, you're allocating your time properly. So what I normally um, used to use last year because it was our first time going with, with the online platform, I would use the daily planners that the lecturers would send to us. So they will literally have like a plan from eight till five, whereby you, you can do certain things within those sessions. So it helps you uh, as well to, to grasp the concept and do questions within a day, knowing, okay, at this hour, I'm supposed to do this, at this hour, I'm supposed to do this. That's but right. um, if, if, if the lecturers are not gonna like send through the, 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 the the planners for you guys. You guys can just contact us, and um, I don't mind giving you or setting up a schedule for you and giving you giving it to you in order for you to use your time effectively. And remember, when you go into the work industry, you'll be working from eight to five. So just normalize making those hours your working time in order for you to also get used to it, so that when you go into the work industry as well, you're already used to working from eight to five. That's very good to keep up with 
a planner, right? To plan yes. your day way in advance. Another thing that worked for me, so, so let's say so you also mentioned about having a study buddy, right? So yes, how do we how do we use this to our advantage in an online platform, right? So yes. Um, something that I did last year was I contacted a friend and we ended up having our sessions online. So what we would do is we would call one another up on a video call on WhatsApp and we would make sure that we are on mute. But at least yes. I saw my friend being in her seat at eight o'clock in the morning. And that helped me so much because Motivate. we could... Yes, we could hold uh, hold one another accountable, right? Yeah. Uh, if I see someone else working, I myself also want to work. So that that also really helped. If you can get your friend to work with you during those times, if not daily, at least once a week, just to see where you guys are at with with keeping up with all the work. It really helps having a friend by your side. Most definitely, yes. Yes, and just to quickly add on that, I really do feel that um, it is important, it's very vital to have a study partner, at least even if it's one, but at least someone that will help you, especially in this online environment where you have yes. to get the discipline yourself, because at least when you go to class, you know, I have no choice, I have to go to class. Well, most of us, we felt bad for not going to class. So <laughs> with online, it's that thing that up to you i mean the lecturers will put up the videos and the work plan but it's up to you so you have yes. to push yourself so even if it means getting somebody else because i know i was i also i was in the habit of saying i will do it but then having someone to push me because i will feel bad if somebody was doing their work and i'm just sitting down or waking up late so it would push me to get up and then start the day it, it, it didn't matter if it was i knew that if i start a, a, an hour later then it's still better than not doing anything. So I knew I'm not a morning person, so I would just put it, push it by one hour. But I, at the end of the day, I made sure that I get the work done. So I think that's, um, that's key. Do not procrastinate, mm -hmm. just do it. That's very really good. So, so we come to the end. We just want to motivate you guys to never give up, keep going, and to wish you good luck for the year. I want to use this analogy of a mountain so that it could encourage you by keeping up to date with your work. Do not allow tax to become a mountain to you. You will see that if you do not keep up to date with your work, it'll look so big. It'll look like such a big task at the end of the day before a test or exam. However, if you know, for example, that you have to cover CGT in this week, and next week you start with fringe benefits, don't wait for next week to only start with CGT. Try and keep to your schedule, stay up to date with your work so that by the end, you will just be able to do questions, to tackle them way and in advance before that test starts. We wish you all the best with your studies this year. And if I may add quickly before, because see, I don't want to. I don't want to finish. I just want to keep going. Um, I want to. I just want to finish off by saying, tax is really doable. It is possible yes. to um, yeah. um, pass tax and really well, guys. Aim for those good marks. Don't yes. just study it because it's aim for yeah, those like eighty section. Because <laughs> yeah, especially in third year, make use of it. Yeah. Tax is a nice subject to study. Honestly, yeah. just get it done and you will see as more um the more you do practice um questions even that it mm -hmm. becomes more nicer and you just start to see things they pop up like this and so text is a really nice module i mean that's why we're here because we love it yes. so <laughs> we also wish that you love it and that it will be one of your best modules this year so good luck guys and please please do not forget to contact us at whatever mm -hmm. um whatever you need and um whenever you're struggling don't I take the mountain alone. I don't know if that's the <laughs> correct thing to say, but let us walk to the top of that mountain with you. Yeah. So yeah, so I think too. that's yeah. it from our side. And good luck, guys. We wish you really the good best. luck, guys. Good luck. Good luck, guys. Bye, Bye. everyone. Bye. <laughs>